It's that time again. Welcome to the best webinar in town. You've been real live. Let's introduce your host from the windy city of Chicago, currently sheltering in place. Please welcome HumanWare's brand ambassador of blindness products, Peter Tucson. And from all the way across the pond, also sheltering in place, but doing so with everyone's favorite accent, please welcome HumanWare's Braille product manager, Andrew Flatridge. I love it. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. It's Humanware Live for Thursday, May 14th. And I think I even got the date right, Andrew. You did this I'm time. Pretty sure. Yes. Hopefully I did. <laughs> it's a it's a winner, right? I was paying attention for, for days just to make sure I had this one. So welcome everybody to Humanware Live. Um, we are glad to be here. We are going to spotlight my video, which Andrew just did. I'm going to start screen sharing in a moment, but before we do, today we are going to be talking about the Victor Reader Trek, and we're going to be doing so in detail. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be covering route creation. Um, I'm going to talk about backtracking a route, and those will be two pre-recorded videos because I'm not actually going to walk around on HumanWare Live, but I will virtually walk around on HumanWare Live and talk about map browsing mode and what that will mean for all of us. Um, it's a very exciting feature that will be coming within the next couple of weeks or months. We're not too sure. We're doing lots of beta testing. We have new maps. I'll be talking about those. And then I will be looking at how we can get pedestrian and driving directions to points of interest. So lots and lots of stuff. We're really cramming it in, but um, it will be very helpful in terms of really realizing and, and kind of looking at the differences between the Victor reader track and using some iPhone apps that may be out there. And we'll talk about some of those differences. So I do have my camera on. I am going to take over screen sharing right now. So give me one second while I do that. Peter, you're good to go. That's fine. As it All is right. at the moment. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, and... you no, know, you'd need to screen share. Sorry. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen yeah. so you can hear the sound. And we're going to share. All right, I'm going to mute my speech. Let me come over here to my keyboard and do that. Space. Speech on demand. All right, and now we are going to be good to go. So we are going to be looking at the Victor Reader Trek, and we're going to be listening to it um, as well. And I will first talk a little bit about, so we have new maps that will be coming to the device. These maps are going to be from here maps, which... A lot of times we hear about Google Maps or different map providers. Here maps are what is used and currently being used in the, all of the sort of autonomous vehicle exploration and things. So GM, Tesla, you know, your car manufacturers are using here maps. So here maps is, we're really excited to begin to work with those. Traditionally, when we worked with our old map provider, it was a very cumbersome process. It took a lot of time to download those maps. So we're looking at new ways of downloading the maps where we'll have them more, more easily available so it won't take so long. Again, this is all speculation, right? We are not announcing any sort of launch. This is not something that will be coming in the next couple of days or weeks. Um, this is something that we're working on. So we will have a new map provider. We've kind of listened to the feedback of everybody. So that will be very exciting. And I'll be using those new maps today when I'm looking at points of interest. I do have a very early version um, and we're going to be looking at some things in Chicago. So I will be, be kind of spotlighting those as well. In terms of what the, the major feature that we're going to be adding in the enhancement, it is map browsing mode. And by map browsing mode, a lot of times for those of us who've used GPS products for quite a while, we know that back on the old Sendero Braille Note sort of products and others, you were able to virtually explore or explore an area without actually needing to walk around. And what I mean by that is you could place yourself at a point of interest or at a specific address and you were able to move seamlessly through that area and walk forward, you know, and hear the various intersections you were passing. You could turn right or left and continue to walk. Theoretically, you could use that to walk from Chicago to New York in theory, right? You could put yourself on a highway and just go straight or get off and explore somewhere in the middle of Ohio. Um, you could do that virtually. And we're looking to, to bring that sort of virtual exploration back into the fold. 
And I'm going to demonstrate how that will work. And the benefits there are tremendous. So again, this is the only sort of device that's going to give us this capability on the mobile side of things. So we're able to put ourselves at a location and virtually walk around. We're able to you know, learn about that conference site before we even go to the conference. Or maybe we're gonna be attending a new school or going to grandma's house. Um, and we can virtually put ourselves at that location and then explore what's around, what streets are around, what points of interest are there. Um, you know, how, what, what happens if we go six blocks west and then turn right and go five blocks, you know, north or something? What, what will that lead to? So we're really excited in terms of adding map browsing mode. And I'm going to give us a quick demo of how that works. And then I'll talk about route creation and all sorts of things. The way that this will work, and to save time, I've pre-saved an address um, in here, and we're going to be doing this at Roosevelt and Racine here in Chicago. There is, um, this is kind of on the near west side of the city of Chicago. We're going to do a little bit of walking around and look at those points of interest. I have pre-saved an address, but on your Victor Reader track, you're able to input an address as a landmark, right? We can always pick a city, pick a state, pick a street, and so on, and actually place ourselves at that address or use it as getting directions, right? We can get directions to Roosevelt and Racine or something. For this example, though, I have it saved and we're going to virtually go there. So I am going to press my go to key, meaning go to landmark. We know the go to key in a book would be go to page or go to heading or go to time. The key above the number one. Right, so the key above the number one, it's shaped like a square um, with a, there's a, a symbol on there you can feel. I'm going to press the go to key and it will say select a landmark as your destination. Select a landmark as your destination. 35 landmarks. 1200 West Roosevelt Road, Chicago. So I have 35 landmarks here, lots and lots of landmarks. Um, and we'll, we'll learn about what those are and how we utilize those in a bit. But this is saying 1200 West Roosevelt Road. And this is where we want to go virtually. Now, when it says select a landmark as your destination, right? I'm going to press confirm and you will hear a number of options. Press confirm to start instructions. Press and hold if in vehicle. Press up to enter map browsing mode. All right, mode. so we heard three things. Warning. Turn instructions to a landmark may guide you through unfamiliar paths. There are three things there in terms of instructions, right? If we want pedestrian guidance to 1200 West Roosevelt Road from our current location, we can press confirm. If we want vehicle guidance, which we'll look at in a little while, we can press and hold confirm, which gives us different types of instructions because we're in a vehicle explore. as opposed to walking. I'm going to have to redo this because it came back to explore. And then if we want to go into map browsing mode or virtually place ourselves at this location, we're going to press up. And remember, up is the number two when we're thinking about the Victor Reader Trek or stream here. So two and eight would be up and down respectively. Four and six would be left and right respectively. So I'm going to come back into that go to. Select a landmark gonna, as your destination. Press diamond key. 35 press landmarks. On this first one. 1200 West Press confirm to start and I'm going instructions. To press the number two. Press and hold. Entering map browsing mode. You are currently on W Roosevelt Road, heading east. And we hear, so I press the number two, which is up, right? And it says, you are currently, it says entering map browsing mode. So it virtually placed me here. And it says, you are heading east, right? We're on West Roosevelt Road. We are heading east. And I can virtually start to walk around. And this becomes awesome because I can learn what streets are around, and not only streets, but points of interest. So to move forward, again, I'm pointing east, I'm heading east. So to move east or to move forward, I am going to press the two key. If I need to turn right, I can press six. If I want to turn left, I can press four. And if I need to turn around, I can use the eight key. But let's just walk forward. Let's walk east on Roosevelt Road together without having to get wet in the crazy rain that's going on without having to get splashed in puddles because it's all nasty out there and we won't get buses flying by and all sorts of things. We're just going to press two and walk east. Four, three-way intersection, W Roosevelt Road crossing street with no name and on your left. And what we is the very first thing we cross is a parking lot entrance here. So this is, we're virtually walking and we get that there is a street with no name on my left. This is actually an entrance to a uh, church and a school. For those of you who are around Chicago, from Chicago, you know what St. Ignatius is over here. But I'm going to press two again. Let's continue walking east. Three-way intersection. 
W. Roosevelt Road crossing Esme Street on your left. So we hear that we are now on West Roosevelt Road. We've, we've walked forward a certain amount of feet and we hear that we're at a three-way intersection with West May Street. So we, we are able to, if we wanted to, turn left on May Street. We're gonna keep walking straight. So I'm gonna press two. Four-way intersection. W. Roosevelt Road with street with no name on your left. W. Roosevelt Road in front and S. Blue Island Avenue on your this right. This is also very cool because this is where there's a street called Blue Island that is truncated. It stops here at Roosevelt Road and empties into kind of an alley that turns into a, a back entrance to a, to a kind of a plaza. So we're hearing that Blue Island is on my right. I have this street with no name because it's a more of an entrance straight ahead. I'm sorry, on my left. And straight ahead, I can continue on Roosevelt Road. Let's keep going straight. Four-way intersection, W. Roosevelt Road crossing S. Morgan right. Street. And now we hear that my next intersection virtually is Roosevelt Road with Morgan Street. Now, what I can do is if I wanted to turn, let's turn left on Morgan Street. Let's, let's go left and let's turn and go north. So if I press my four key, I virtually turn left. On your left, S. Morgan Street. it says Street. on your left, West Morgan Street. That means we've turned left. And now if I press two, I'm going to be heading north because I've turned left. So I virtually turn myself left. Again, if I want to know the direction I'm heading in, I can press five. Heading east. I guess I have a so West Roosevelt Road. But let's Current intersection. Let's actually four move ways. North here. Three way intersection. S. Morgan Street crossing. All right, so street now that I've actually no moved on, on Morgan, your right. If I press five, you're going to hear that I'm heading north. Heading north. Right. Near 1148 South Morgan so Street. So again, we're virtually Current intersection. Walking around. Three ways. And we're going to get. S. Morgan Street crossing street with no name again, on your there's right. There's no way for me to make it be quiet right now because I, I don't want to leave map browsing mode. What we're getting is we're getting the feedback, right? We're getting the intersection for crossing. And more importantly, we're getting the type of intersection, which as a blind traveler, as somebody who travels all the time, all over the place, this sort of information is crucial because sometimes you do get to intersections and it's unclear at first if it's a three way. If it's a T, maybe it's a dog leg intersection, um, or, or sometimes in Chicago, we have six way intersections, which are absolutely wild, but we're able to virtually explore this. Let's come north, let's, let's continue straight one more uh, intersection here. So I'm gonna press the two key. Three way intersection, S Morgan Street crossing this street is, with uh, no name on your right. Name. That would be, that's another alley sort of thing here. Let's go north one more. Three way one intersection. More Five-way intersection, S. Morgan Street with W. Taylor Street on your left, S. Morgan Street in front, W. Taylor Street on your right, and W. Taylor Street so on your right. So you're hearing here that there are two Taylor Streets, and this is because there is a turn lane. So we're going we're gonna to clean that up when we get this actually going. But what we hear is we're at an intersection where we can now right, turn left or right on Taylor. We're virtually walking around. I'm gonna go left on Taylor because we're gonna look at some points of interest here. So I'm gonna turn left on Taylor Street, pressing my four key. On your left, W I'm going Taylor to move Street. Forward. Now again, we're, we've kind of made a, we're, we're, we've made sort of a, a U shape because I'm gonna now be heading back straight west, but I'm gonna press my two key. Three-way intersection, W Taylor Street crossing S Miller Street right, on so your we're right. At Taylor and Miller and I'm now heading west. If I press my five key, we will hear that I'm heading west. Heading west. Near 1025 West Taylor Street. Right, and we Street. get the intersection. Current intersection, three ways. W Taylor Street crossing S Miller Street on so your right. So again, if I want to get points of interest here, so I'm thinking, gosh, what's around here virtually? I'm virtually at Taylor and Miller. I want to know what's around. If I press the and hold the number five key, I can see what is virtually around the points of interest. So I'm going to do that. What's around? 10 items. 1. Curry on fire. Restaurant. 1030 West Taylor so Street. What's, what's fantastic right. is 46 this is giving feet. me the landmarks. And I will tell you, in the current version of the trek that everyone is using out there, if you go to this intersection, Curry on Fire is it's it's I don't think it's there. This is a new restaurant. The new here maps have very, very good points of interest. So you're able to get updated points of interest. Now, if I press my six key, I will move forward through. Map browsing mode on your right. Oh, S. Miller's up. What's Around 10 if items. I press my six key. One, two, 
Original Five Barbecue. That was, uh, original Five Restaurant. Barbecue. I think that's close. Ten three. Tuscany. Tuscany. Restaurant. Ten forty four. Little Joe's Little Circle Joe's. Lounge. Five. Tybal. A lot of restaurants. Re Six. Niagara Packing. Seven. Taylor Food Mart. Eight. Volcano Sushi Cafe. Nine. Demitas. Ten. Alabama's beef. Alabama's beef. beef. That Restaurant. is actually going Matt to be called Al's mode. beef. But Alabama's beef, which is one of my favorite uh, TTS sort of faux pas, right? Anytime we hear TTS, we all know Apple or Android or Jaws, or sometimes they will try to outdo themselves with uh, abbreviations. So Alabama's beef is actually called Al's beef. But the point is we can see these points of interest. Um, because we are virtually browsing, we're not going to select them to get directions because we're, we're, we're already virtually moving around. But the, the, the ability here for us to walk around an area without actually being there is huge. So we can, we can explore, figure out the intersection types, turn right or left, and just walk for miles and miles and miles without, or, or kilometers, right, if we're, if we're in another country, um, without worrying about kind of actually having to be there. We can just do it. So virtual, this map browsing mode will be coming to the track. It is very, very exciting. And we're, we're really excited to bring it to everyone, again, with the new here maps. So the here maps will make a major difference as well. All right, I am going to come out of virtual browsing mode. So I'm going to press my star key to get out of this. Map browsing. Press confirm to exit. And I want to press confirm. Let's come back to real time. Explore. Right. Now, I am in my house, so I, I'm, I do have GPS signal, but I'm not actually on a street, so it's going to put me in an open area here. However, what I... Leaving open I area. I tried to force it. On S May so Street. So it did put me on South May Street. If When I'm walking around, I am able to press the six key to get my next intersection. Now, I'm not moving right now, right? I'm not technically moving. But if I press my six key... Entering uh, open area. Out, and it's going to Chicago. do that because I'm right on the fringe and I'm not locking myself in open area. But if I'm on a street and I press six, I will get that next intersection. If I press five, I will get the where am I, which is my direction of travel, as we heard, the intersection that I'm closest to, and then what the kind of type of intersection that is as well. If I want to change that verbosity, right? To change what I'm getting, you can adjust. Do you want to hear the intersection types? Do you want to hear the address number? Or do you want to hear none of it, right? You can alter that within settings. So if we use the seven key and go into settings, we can change a lot of those, that sort of verbosity. We can reset our GPS positioning. We can adjust some of that, um, some of that sort of information that is, that is coming back to us. The other thing I want to talk about is, so I'm currently at my house. I want to get walking directions somewhere. So we looked at how I can virtually walk around, but what if I want directions from my current location to um, probably the greatest sandwich shop in the entire world called Fontano's, right? Which is an Italian sub shop here in Little Italy. I want to find it and get walking directions to it. So what I can do is I can search for what's around when I'm in real time and get directions to that location. So if I press and hold five, I will bring up the what's around sort of piece of this. What's around one item. Heard. One. And we're going to hear South that there Main are Street. some landmarks and things saved. South May Street. But Six if I press 222 feet, if I press my four key, I will move over extended to the search. extended search area. And this is where I can actually search for a business by category or by name. So if I press confirm. Select search type, two items, search by category. So you're hearing there are two choices here. I can search by categories. Maybe I want to find all the restaurants around or all the banks or something like that. But if I press my six key or four key, I will move to. Search by search name. Search by name. And this is what we want. We're going to type in the name of a business that we want to go to. We're going to get some walking directions. So I'm going to press confirm on search by name. Enter text to search. Fun. Now, I did cheat here because I pre-entered this text, but I will re-enter it because I had made sure this was uh, going, to, going to be kind of doable in a quick fashion earlier this morning. But I'm going to press and hold my, as we learned when we, when we worked with the Victor Reader stream slash track in text entering, I can press and hold the key to the left to play pause and clear this text field. And you hear that kind of beep, that higher pitched beep tells me that this is empty and I can type in the name of the business I'm looking for. 
Uh, again, we learned how to type a couple of weeks ago. So if you need to refer to that previous episode of Humanware Live, I talk about text entry, but I'm going to type in F-O-N-T. E-F-O. Again, going to wait for the click. N. -T. So this should get me the gist of it, right? I want Fontano. I'm like, I don't need to type in the entire whole text string of the name of the business. I'm going to press confirm and it will search. Searching. One. Fontano subs. Restaurant. 1058 West Polk Street. One o'clock. 652 feet. So it's telling me it's at about 600 feet at one o'clock and that is absolutely correct. If I'm outside my house and facing north, I need to do sort of an L-shaped drop to get there. Now, if so I find the business, I press confirm. And again, we're going to hear those same three instructions. Press confirm if I want pedestrian, press and hold confirm if I want uh, vehicle, which we'll do in a moment, and then press up or two if I want to virtually be placed in front of this business. I want pedestrian guidance. So I'm going to press confirm and then we're going to press confirm again. Press confirm to start instructions. Press and hold if in vehicle. Press up to enter map browsing mode. All right, and remember, confirm is to Warning, the right of zero. Turn instructions to a landmark may guide you through unfamiliar paths. So I am going to press confirm, and we are going to start with the instructions. Pedestrian guidance to Fontano subs. So we are now in pedestrian guidance. And at this point, I would start walking, and I would get real-time directions as to where it is that I need to be going. What I can also do though, is I can virtually explore this route. I can look at these steps before I actually take the route. To do that, I, so again, if, if, I'm, if I'm walking in real time, I can use my six key and it's gonna say, all right, next instruction in such and such feet. But I'm not going to walk around. I don't wanna get wet. So I'm going to press and hold the number six to preview, to put myself in indoor preview, uh, to look at the steps involved in this route. In indoor preview, Three-way intersection, S. May Street crossing street with no name on your right. All right, and that street with Turn no name. Turn left on S. May Street. That street with no name on my right, that I, it, it is an entrance into a city park that I'm on. So again, it's not actually a street. And this is why a lot of times when you use any GPS, whether it's a track, whether it's Google Maps, whether it's, you know, Waze or something on your phone, whatever you may be using, you will have, sometimes it says, turn right, and it's some parking lot, right? It, it, this is just the nature of GPS. You will contend with streets with no name or unmarked entrances, unmarked alleys, unmarked sort of um, places that you may be encountering. So all maps are, in this sense, created equal in terms of them giving you these types of unmarked or unnamed streets, especially when you're in open areas like I live on, where I live on a park, and I also live in kind of a complex of townhomes where things are very you know, can be off the grid. But to look at these steps, I can press my six key. So it told me I need to turn left on May Street basically when I come out of my front door. But if I press my six key, I'll see the next step. In 416 feet, four-way intersection, AS May Street crossing W Polk Street. Turn right on W Polk Street. So we see that my next instruction, 400 feet, when I get to Polk Street, I'm going to need to turn right on Polk Street. So I do that. Right, and, and I will then press six and again, get my next set of instructions. In 10.9 feet, four-way intersection, W Polk Street crossing S Aberdeen Street. Go straight on W Polk Street. So I accidentally hit it twice. <laughs> we missed that. There's actually an alley, a street with no name alley entrance before we get to this four-way. So it's about 300 feet down Polk, but I get the instruction that I'm going to cross Aberdeen and I need to keep going straight. So I'll press six again for my next step. In 223 feet, destination on your left. Then I get that the destination is on my left. So basically I need to go to Polk Street, turn right, cross one intersection, one simple four-way intersection, and then walk and I will get to my next, uh, my destination on my left. And again, you're going to use your orientation and mobility skills to narrow that down. Just because it's on my left, I'm gonna to have to ask some questions. I'm going to have to learn where is that building? I mean, the next step of this is going to be to identify the actual door, right? Um, but what we can also do, we're still in indoor preview. I can back up through these steps, but with my four key. So four and six move me forward and backward through the steps of these instructions. You also hear that I'm getting the intersection types because these are pedestrian instructions. So I'm getting the type of intersection, I'm getting you know, the, the street name, and then it's telling me what I need to do at that step of my instructions. All right, I'm gonna cancel this route. We're, we're done with this. We're gonna look at driving directions. I'm going to press 
I'm going to press my cancel key, so we're going to hit star. Guiding to a landmark. Press confirm to stop guiding. And I want to stop guiding, so I'm going to press confirm. Ruthie activated. Explore. All right. And now I'm going to, we're going to do one more of these. And this time we're going to get driving directions so we can hear how they differ. Um, and, and we won't need to go through an entire route, but we're not, we're going to see what the, what is the difference between pedestrian guidance and vehicle guidance? Because there is a major difference. Um, we're in a car, right? We don't, we're not going to have time, especially if we're moving kind of fast, to know every single intersection we are passing. So I'm going to search for a point of interest. We're going to go to the grocery store. Here in Chicago, there is a grocery store called Jewel. Most locals call it Jewels, even though there's no S on the name. And really, they say Dud Jewels. So they'll be like, I'm going by the Jewels. You know, i got to pick some stuff up at the Jewels. Um, and we're going to go by the Jewels today. So we want to go to Jewel. I'm going to search for it by name. I could always do sort of a category search and look up grocery stores, but let's do it the quick way. So I'm going to hit my go to key. So again, above the number one. Select a landmark as your destination. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to, I'm going to do it, do it the longer way. We're not going to enter a specific address. We're actually just going to search for it by name. Sorry about that. I'm going to press and hold five. What's around? Two I'm items. Hit four. One, extended we want search. Extended search. I'm going to press confirm on extended search. Select search type. Two right, items. We're going to search by name. Search by category. The first choice here is search by category. I'm going to press my six key to search by name. Search by to name. Press confirm. So again, to the right of zero. Enter text to search. Font. All right, we don't want font anymore. So I'm going to press and hold the key to the left of play, which will clear out this text field. And we're going to type in J E W E L. J E W E L. I'm going to press confirm. Searching. And what it will do Please wait. is it will perform the search from my current location. One. Julia Losco. Grocery store. 1220 South Ashland Avenue. Right. Five o'clock. 0 0.7 miles. So it's 0 0.7 miles away. And there are multiple jewels. Uh, we would find um, several jewel locations here uh, because there are more than one and I can move six with the number six key through my list of possible you know matches for my search term but we're going to choose this first one so I'm going to press confirm and what you'll notice is instead of pressing confirm again I'm going to press and hold because we want vehicle guidance this time press confirm to start instructions press and hold if in vehicle All right, so I'm going to press press hold. up to enter map browsing mode And we're getting our vehicle Please guidance. Wait. Calculating. Motorized guidance to Jewel Losco. All right. Now, the difference here is our instructions are going to be for somebody who is driving. And as you know, somebody who's driving is not looking for every single intersection type, right? Where we look at things in terms of what is our next real turn or what is our next step. We're not going to say cross 17 streets. 13 four-way intersections and so on, and then turn left. What we're looking for is, you know, in 0.4 miles or at this certain point, turn left, and then here, turn right. So again, I'm gonna indoor preview this route because we're not actually going to drive around, although that would be a lot of fun. I should get a GoPro and really do some human wear live where it's me um, out and about just cruising the streets. And maybe that's something we look at at some point in time. But I'm going to press and hold the six key to indoor preview mode so we can look at these instructions before we drive there. In indoor preview, in 143 feet, three-way intersection, street with no name crossing Esme Street on your right. Drive onto Esme Street. All right, it's telling us drive onto May Street. So as soon as we're on May Street, we are now going to get vehicle instructions. I'm going to press the six key. Let's listen to our next instruction. In 303 feet, four-way intersection, Esme Street crossing W. Taylor Street. Turn right on W. Taylor okay. Street. Notice you didn't hear all that street with no name and crossing this little thing and that little thing. It's just giving you your next real instruction. So it's telling us, let's go to Taylor, turn right on Taylor. What's our next step? In 407 feet, four-way intersection, W. Taylor Street crossing S. Racine Avenue. Turn left on S. Racine Avenue. So it's telling us to turn left on Racine. Let's keep going. In 864 feet, Four-way intersection, S. Racine Avenue crossing W. Roosevelt Road. 
Turn right on W. Roosevelt Road. And you'll hear that it said in 800 and something feet, we get to Roosevelt. It, we skipped over about two or three streets there. And now we're just going to look at saying, us turn right on Roosevelt. Let's press our six key again. In 0 0.6 miles, four-way intersection, W. Roosevelt Road crossing S. Paulina Street. Turn left on S. Paulina Street. Right, and it's giving us, our next instruction is in 0.6 miles. So we're not getting all the little streets as though we were walking. And this is crucial because it, 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 it's giving us car sort of motorized instruction. I'm gonna press six again. In 44 feet, three-way intersection, S. Paulina Street crossing W. Roosevelt Road. There's kind of a Turn left on W. Roosevelt here, so Road. Turn in. In 204, and end, in 365 feet, destination. Right, we're going to be at that, and it's a parking lot, so it's not on our right or left. Again, this is this is unique. I mean, it's a grocery store, so you you become kind of walled into the shopping center sort of strip mall area. I will say though, we notice the difference here, and I'm going to show you how to drop landmarks because that's where that would come in handy, right? If you're actually walking there, you need to be able to put landmarks in to tell you you're going into a shopping center, or parking lot, and so on. And we'll look at how we do that. Um, and again, these are digital landmarks, right? These are like dropping a pin on a map. But we notice the difference between vehicle guidance, pedestrian guidance, and then virtually exploring an area. So I'm going to press my star key to the left of zero. We're going to cancel. Guiding to a landmark, press confirm to stop guiding. Let's get out of here. Ruthie activated. Right. Now, at this point of the program, I want to talk about routes because routes are another major advantage to the Victor Reader track. A route, so we looked at guidance, right? We looked at getting sort of step by step instructions to a destination. But a route is very different. A route could be anything, right? A route is basically a recording of your movement. Not your sound, but your movement. So I can leave my house and say, I want to create a route. And I can walk for seven blocks or half a mile or two turns. And I can say, all right, we're going to stop this route. And at that point, that route becomes saved so I can walk it again. Right. So if you're newer to vision loss or if you're somebody who maybe there is just some very tricky obstacle or something that you want to avoid a certain intersection or whatever it may be, routes are great because you can press go and follow that pre-recorded route, your movement, and avoid or get exactly to where you need to be. Once you're there, you can also backtrack a route. So if you pre-record, let's say you walk, I walk from my house, I turn right, walk a couple of blocks, turn left, walk a block, and stop the route, I can then hit backtrack and go back to the origin of my route to get back to my starting point. So this can be very useful in certain situations when you're teaching um, kind of, you know, that, that those first stages of independent travel. This is something that is not really available anywhere but here because this is really made for that blind pedestrian and it, it is made for somebody who wants pre, sort of that pre-done guidance and it's very different from, we're not going to an address, we're not going to a destination. We are creating our starting and ending points and then it is saved for future reference. I'm gonna, there's a video, actually it's not a video, I wish it was, because then you would see me cruising the streets, but it is audio that I created for last summer's conferences of myself creating a route. And I wanna share it with everyone. Some of you may have already heard this, but what it demonstrates Entering is- Entering open area. That I am able Chicago. to turn this down. Actually, we're gonna, we're just gonna, kind of do this, get it out of here. I'm going to stop my video in a moment. Um, but what I want to sh do is show you how we are able to create a route and drop landmarks along that route for future reference when we backtrack. Or every time we come close to that landmark, it will be spoken. And I want to demonstrate how we do that. So you won't see my hands pushing the buttons. I am going to come and play this video and I will be back when it is finished. So bear with me no visuals. For those of you who are light dependent, we are all in the same boat at this point in the program. All right, so I am going to do this from my keyboard here. Firstly, I'm going to come in and share my video. All right, so we're going to go through the root creation demo. This is going to play in Groove Music. Here we go. 
Hey everybody, it is Peter Tusick, brand ambassador of blindness products for Humanware, and I am once again going to record some fun sessions for everybody at the conventions this year. This one uh, is going to be on the Victor Reader Trek and actually recording a route. So a lot of times we will have situations where we might be walking the same route every day, we might be looking to avoid certain intersections, or we might just want to remember where to go um, at a, a route that might be somewhat familiar but not perfectly familiar. So we can walk Walk and the trek will record where we walk and then we can actually backtrack and I'm going to be doing that as well. I'm also going to be adding landmarks in while I am walking my route. So you will hear the good old streets of Chicago while I do this and I am stepping outside my house and I'm going to be able to press the number five key to find out where I am so I'm just going to do that and we're gonna make sure that we're actually on South May Street which is where I live. Heading south. Near 887 All South right. May Street. Perfect. So we're getting that I'm near 887 South May. Um, again, it's just picking up the satellite so it, it knows that I'm by my house. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my route. And again, while I'm recording this, I'm actually going to drop landmarks into my route as well. So to start recording a route, I can press my bookmark key, which is the diamond shaped key above the number three. If I press and just press that key, I'm going to be getting a, the record a landmark option. But if I press and hold, I'll actually be recording the route. So I'm going to press and hold. Press confirm to start creating a new route. And it says press confirm to start creating a new route. So again, confirm is going to be our pound key. So I'm going to press pound. Record route name. Round the block. Route name recorded. Begin walking. So again, what it, creation is in progress. what it did there is it gave me the ability to record the route name before I start walking. So now that I've recorded the name, I am going to step off and we are going to walk around the block. And what we're going to hear is as I'm walking, remember, I can always press my number six key to hear my next intersection. I'm going to be passing a car here on my left. But if I push the number six, we will get Next intersection in 226 feet, four ways. Freedom. South May Street crossing West Polk Street. So again, we hear that I'm coming up to West Polk Street. And again, at any point, if I need to, I can always check where I am with my number five key to find out where, where I might be on my route. Four-way intersection, South May Street crossing West Polk Street. Which is perfect, so I'm heading and I'm coming up to West Polk Street. I'm actually going to turn left onto Polk Street at this point. On West Polk Street. Feedback that we've actually done so. So we're getting the feedback that I have turned left. And again, it's recording my, my movements here as I traverse this route. Another piece of this is I'm coming up to a parking lot entrance that I might want to remember. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drop a landmark on this parking lot entrance in case, um, again, to let me know that that is what this is. So we're going to, I'm just going to record a landmark while I walk. So I'm going to, again, press my record button or just tap it, or I could tap my diamond key on my truck. Record landmark. Polk Street parking lot. Landmark recorded. Polk Street parking lot. All right. So at that point, I dropped the landmark in and we'll continue walking on Polk Street. We're going to be coming up to Racine Avenue. For those of you who are from Chicago, you might even know where I am. I am in Little Italy and I'm going to be turning left when I get to Racine, but the truck will prompt me that I'm getting pretty close to Racine any minute or any second now. Three-way intersection, West Polk Street crossing South Racine Avenue. All right, so there we go. We get that Polk Street is crossing Racine Avenue. I'm going to turn left onto Polk here. I mean, left onto Racine, I'm sorry. Now it gets nice and loud. On South Racine Avenue. And we just heard the truck tell me that I am on South Racine Avenue. Three-way intersection, walking. South Racine Avenue, crossing West Cabrini Street on your right. And there is a street across the street from me on my right, but notice it said three-way, so I'm not actually crossing that street because that street is on my right across the street. So I'm going to continue straight. And again, I'm going to be coming up to another parking lot. 
and I'm actually going to landmark on South Racine Avenue. this parking lot as well. So I'm almost at the entrance to what I know is the parking lot where actually where our car is parked, my wife and I. Definitely not my car necessarily. Uh, I am going to drop a landmark here. So again, this is my parking lot, Racine parking lot entrance when I hit record. Record landmark. Racine parking lot. Landmark recorded. All right. Racine parking lot. We hear that it recorded my parking lot. I'm going to continue on Racine. Heading south again. If I want to know where I am, I can always press my number five. Heading south. Near 871 South Racine Avenue. Next intersection in 118 feet. Three ways. South Racine Avenue crossing West Arlington Street on your right. So again, another street on my right. But Three way intersection. South Racine Avenue crossing West Arlington Street on your right. Right, but again, it's only on my right. So I'm continuing straight because it's a T intersection. And I'm actually going to be walking up. Uh, at some point very soon, the trek will be telling me that I'm approaching Taylor Street. And we're going to stop the route once I get to Taylor Street, and then we're going to on actually South Racine Avenue. backtrack. And the reason why it's set on South Racine is I passed Arthington, and it wants me to make sure that I still know that I'm continuing south on Racine. So again, this is kind of a longer block, because we notice we haven't had those streets. So when, once I get here, getting closer to Taylor, and the truck will tell me so. I'm just crossing some alleys and some parking lot entrances. And at this point. Four way intersection. All right. South Racine Avenue crossing West Taylor Street. So the bus is going by, the number 60, but if you heard it said uh, Racine Avenue crossing South Taylor Street. So again, what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to stop my route creation. And what I'm going to do in order to stop my route creation is I'm going to press and hold my diamond key. Press confirm to stop route. Okay, so it says press confirm to stop route, and this is where I want to stop the route. So I will press confirm. Press confirm to stop route. Round the block. Has been created successfully. And that is how that demo is done. Now, what you noticed is, and I'm going to show the backtrack feature, not the entirety of it. We don't need to walk all the way back around the block, but mainly I want to show what happens when you backtrack and you come across a landmark or just when you're walking around and you come across a landmark because landmarks are very, very important to us as blind travelers because they, they can help cue us into um, something that might not be kind of a, you know, these digital landmarks are, are meant for something that isn't actually on the map. So maybe it's a park entrance or maybe it's some of those no-name streets, right? We might want to say, hey, this is actually the entrance to St. Ignatius College Prep um, or whatever it is. So I'm going to show how that backtrack works, but this route is very important because now at any point in time, I can pull it up and I can walk around the block. Obviously, I don't need to do that, but if it were some new place, if it were somewhere I went frequently and I really wanted the lay of the land, but I just couldn't remember the steps or didn't want to go through the hassle of always typing in the address or finding the landmark, you can save it as a route and pull it back up. And in this, this next demo, I will show you how we pull that back up. So again, I'm going to come back to my desktop here and I am going to play the second piece of the program, which is my backtrack route creation. We're not going to listen to the whole thing. We're mainly just going to hear me walk up the street and encounter one of those landmarks that I dropped. So we hear what it's like when we actually cross a landmark. All right, I am going to be quiet and here it goes. All right, friends. And now if you uh, have paused with me, I'm back in action and I'm going to actually reverse the route that I just created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that route up as though I were going to walk it and I'm going to tell it to backtrack because I want to get back to my starting point. So it, in order to do that, I am going to press and hold the go to key, which is our square button above the number one. And we will be presented with my list of routes. Route selection, three routes. We have three routes. Block. Now, these have been on my unit for a while. I'm going to press the number six key to move through my routes, and we're going to get over to around the block. Round the block. Round the block. That is me. That's the route I want. I'm going to press confirm. Press confirm to be guided in forward direction. 
Press and hold if in reverse direction. So I'm going to press and hold confirm because I am in reverse direction. Active route. Round the block. Please head north towards South Racine Avenue crossing West Arlington Street on your left. So Four-way intersection. Now again. South Racine Avenue crossing West Taylor Street. Heading off route. So it tells me Please I'm heading off route. Back. I'm going to start walking and it will catch up with me right now. So what will happen is, remember, I did record some landmarks on this route. And I'm walking north on Racine. Now remember, at any point, I need to know um, what it is that I'm trying to do. If I press my six key. In 164 feet, go straight on South Racine Avenue. It's going to tell me where I need to head, because again, now I'm following the route that I recorded, just in reverse direction. So I'm going to continue straight, because it's saying in 164 feet, I'll keep going straight. And remember, we're going to get notified that there are some... Three-way intersection, South Racine Avenue crossing West Arlington Street on your left. Right, so Go those same... Go straight on South Racine Avenue. Those same T-shaped intersections. Next instruction in 336 feet. And my next instruction will be in 336 feet. So we're just crossing that first... Um, First T-shaped intersection, I'm going to continue north. And remember, we're going to hit that parking lot that I landmarked in a moment. On South Racine Avenue. Freedom. So now we're getting very close to where I had dropped that landmark for my parking lot entrance. Getting up to it. So again, it tells me I'm, I'm at that landmark and I was about 10 feet off of it. So it did very well. Again, landmarks are gonna get you close. They're not gonna get you to within one meter or one foot. They're gonna be about 10 to 15 feet. I'd say 10 to 20 feet in general. All right, that's enough of that. So the whole point here, and how many times can I say and remember? That's what I've learned from this. I need to, I need to work on uh, my diction here when I record demos. And remember, and remember. Um, but the point here is we're able to record routes, backtrack, and we also see the importance of dropping in landmarks. Those landmarks are spoken when we get to within about 15, 20 feet, and they help us get, you know, they kind of nail down uh, some sort of object or an entrance or a place that might be unfamiliar. You can also drop those in open areas. I attended the University of Illinois at Chicago, which is a pretty, not a huge, huge campus, but it has a huge open quad. And I would use the track at that time, the breeze, to drop landmarks at the entrances of the various um, you know, lecture centers or halls because it was very wide open and it really helped, especially when I was learning the campus, um, to, to be able to say, well, I need to go to Stevenson Hall and then I need to go to Taft Hall and it might have been 800 feet through an open area, right? Not a street direction. You, you, you couldn't get that with a sort of a Google Maps or sort of thing. So landmarks become very crucial. I like this, uh, <laughs> I like doing these demos. I can always do more. It's been great. And I, I do have some open area demos too. But I think that at this point, we've kind of seen, you know, a lot of the features are what sets the track apart and what makes it unique. We also see that there are some great things coming in terms of map browsing mode, um, the new maps, and then also understanding that there's the differences between using it versus some applications that are out there. I do use iPhone GPS apps, personally. Um, there are some that I use here and there, depending on what it is that I'm doing, but the Trek takes all of that to the next level. And so... Podcast download completed. Apparently the podcast download has completed. But with that, Andrew, I'm hoping you're not sleeping over there in the UK. Uh, was I was I boring on the uh, the Peter show here? No, I'm still up, Peter. And actually, that was that was <laughs> great. I mean, those uh, those sessions you did outside, it sounded as if you was doing them now today. It sounded <laughs> like you was. In fact, it sounded like you was running, Peter, as well at the time. I was moving pretty fast because I was trying to get them <laughs> done. So I was like, all right, and we can hear where we are. And also, you heard my iPhone go to sleep and kind of glitch uh, when I was recording those. So I had, I had Velcroed the track to the back of my iPhone to do a little. Uh, so you could hear the track and me at the same time. It was kind of, it was fun. It was cool. But I, I hope it was useful and I'd love to take questions. Um, I'm actually going to stop my screen share and unmute my jaws so that I can hear some of what's going on. Let me do that. 
let me just uh, just raise some of the questions now, Peter, that some have uh, just dropped into yeah, the chat. Absolutely. So um, one of the questions was, when you drop a landmark, do you need to say on my left or right? You do. You do have to say on your left or right if that's important to you. So that Polk Street, I mean, again, it, it's going to depend on your travel skills. I mean, I knew, I remembered that I was walking, you know, down Polk Street um, on the on kind of the south side of the street. If that's something you need you and, and you're not sure, you can absolutely include that in your uh, landmark description. It will not tell you because it doesn't know. Again, the landmark is more of a pin. Right. So when you drop a pin, you're essentially saying, just remember this location. But if you know you're always going to be walking in a certain direction, you might want to say on your left or on your right. That landmark that I created, I just said Polk Street parking lot. It's, and so if I were to say on my left, the problem with that is it is on my left when I'm walking you know, west, but it's on my right when I'm walking east. So landmarks are not you know, you, you need to think about why you're dropping that landmark um, and if it's appropriate for you to say on your left or on your right. Good, good answer. And so uh, next question that's come in is, um, what button did you press to record your landmark? So to record my landmark, um, you, and I, I said it in the demo there, you can either, there are two ways. You can either push record, which is the button on the right side, the right face of your Victor Reader track, or you can push the diamond key just tap the diamond key above the number three. That is your landmark, or record landmark button. And you've got about four seconds to name those. You're, you're, that is how long your, your voice tag will be. So if it's a big, long name, you gotta, you gotta, go, you gotta go really, really fast, right? To get it all in there. Um, but you will get about four seconds. Okay, next question is, how does tactile vibration feedback for directions work? So you will get, uh, that's a very good question. So there is haptic feedback. Um, and you will get different vibrations for the, the types of turns you need to make. Um, for instance, two vibrations to turn left or three to turn right. It, it maps it that way or one long one to go straight. So it will give you the, the, the and, and I could be wrong, I, I'm, I'm not remembering exactly what the vibration pattern is, but you are prompted with, so if you can't hear the device, um, you are prompted with those vibrations to tell you, oh, I should be turning right here. Maybe, maybe you missed it or something, but it will give you different vibration patterns and there's only three because you have three choices really when you get when you're following directions you're not going to do a u-turn hopefully um right i mean your, your choices are left right straight so you will get vibration patterns for those okay next question is our office has a trekker breeze do we need to purchase the newest device or will it accept the new updates you mentioned thanks that's a great question. So the Trekker Breeze is something we sold several years ago. Um, we did go to the Breeze Plus I, right around the time I started with HumanWare. These new maps and new things will only work on the Victor Reader Trek. Um, the new licensing, the, the way maps work, it has to do with licensing and all sorts of things, as well as the engine and, and all of that. So you would need to actually, if you wanted to take advantage of the new here maps, um, the virtual exploration or, or map browsing mode, you would need to, to work with the Victor Reader Trek or with the new device. Good. Okay. Um, so a couple of questions. Uh, how do I enter in today's contest? Well, if you've uh, registered to today's webinar and uh, you registered before 12 Eastern Standard Time yesterday, then you'll be with uh, in a chance to win a Victor Reader stream some time in the next few minutes. Okay? <laughs> <Exactly>. just start, <laughs> we'll just answer a few questions first and then we'll come to that. So, yes. so why are the landmarks only five seconds long, Peter? Uh, well, think about it. If you are looking at a landmark and we go on and on and on and on, you're going to be standing around for a long time. Um, there's, there is a time limit because they're meant for real time travel. So if I'm walking, four to five seconds could be a long time. Obviously, it's, it's not that bad, right? We're hearing a cue and it, they're not meant to be entire notes. They're not voice notes. If you need to record voice notes, that is a totally separate piece, but a landmark is just a small voice tag that tells you what is unique or why are you dropping this, this point. And four seconds, five seconds is, is the limit there. Okay. And just for everyone's information, I have enabled the raised hand. So if you do want to ask a live question, please go ahead and raise your hand and we'll come to you in just a moment. Um, some other questions that's just came in. Um, can you delete a landmark? 
on the Alert, question. Question. So if you want to delete a Alert, landmark, uh, what you would do is Alert, you you can do it through Alert, settings, Oscar, or when you go Alert, to a landmark. So if you press that go to key, Alert, select from, the landmark as your destination. When you hear it spoken, you can use the three key to enter Alert, landmark five. settings, and you can use four or six to Alert, Oscar, delete or remove option. Alert, four participants raised. Alert, five. The hands are like bouncing, like Alert, you would not believe. There are hands <laughs> going up and down and all over the town. Alert, okay. seven participants raise hand. <laughs> let's go and answer Alert, some. Let's do it. Or should we Alert, actually, Darren let's, Dyson. let's, um, let, yeah, Alert, let's, answer, participants let's answer two, then we'll do the Alert, draw, Oscar, and then okay. we'll answer a couple. Alert, six part Alert, eight participants raised hand. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> a lot of questions. So we have the first It's one. so funny that they're going up Alert, and down. It's, I find it beautiful. All right. Okay, so the first one we can have is Mary Carla Hayes. Hello, Mary Carla Hayes. Just to mute yourself. You are on the blower. Alert, seven participants raised hand. Are you there, Mary Alert, Carla? Alert. Just Mary press Carla. Alt plus A. If you're on the keyboard, press Alt. And the letter A to unmute Alert, yourself. If you're on a Windows computer or if you're on a Mac, it's Command A. Alert, Oscar, or there's an unmute button, Alert, six part which you can get to on the iPhone. Alert, or the from top, you can press U if you're in the meeting controls. Oh, there we All go. right, you got oh, it. Gee, I must not have been focused on Zoom. Uh, my question is, Alert, um, Mary I have been using, I have been using the, um, the narrow maps for Alert, years with the Apex, and the one um, Alert, that I'm not, the one Alert, feature six, that I've always loved is the look around feature. Hey, that on demand. You turn it on, um, and you're not going to a route necessarily, but you're in a car. It'll tell you all the places you're passing. Is there any thoughts of bringing that back to the trek? That's a great question. It's definitely a suggestion that, that we can take into account with the new maps. Um, I think there could be some certain modes, certainly. Um, thanks for, for bringing it up. I remember, yeah, the look around was neat. I used it on the bus a lot, you know, to know points of interest and things you're passing. So yes, I, I definitely think we, we, we love the suggestion and it's certainly something we would love to look at bringing back. So um, once we get all this kind of going, then it, it may be there. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Good seminar. Oh, thanks a bunch. All right, one okay. more, then uh, maybe two more. We'll make everyone wait for the draw. <laughs> we will hold you hostage. No, we won't do that. We will, okay. uh, we'll, we'll do the draw in a moment. We have Jim Gammon. Hello, Jim. Jim, welcome to the uh, show. So Jim one second. Gammon. So Jim is using an older version of Zoom. Okay, so Jim, I can't. Some oh, reason can't I need to talk. You. No. Jim, you are muted. Yeah, you're, if your Zoom is out of date, we can't unmute you on our side. So you'll have to either press Alt A. If you're in, and if, if you're not in focus, press Control Alt Shift to bring your meeting fo uh, controls into focus. If you're using Windows, and press Alt A to unmute, um, or, or locate that unmute button. We'll give you two, oh, yeah. one, Jim. Wah, wah. Sorry, Jim. Um, if you can get it unmuted, uh, feel free to raise your hand again, but you are, we're not able to unmute you. One more, Andrew. Okay, so we have Mary Haroyan. I hope I pronounced that correct. Mary. Mary. Mary Haroyan. Yes. Hi. Yeah, uh, thank you. Hi, Mary. Just, hi, thanks. Great, great seminar. I was just wondering, what is the size um, of the Victor Reader? track compared to like the victor stream and the, so, the weight that's a wonderful question so the size so mary if you hold a victor reader stream in your hand the form factor is identical it is just slightly thicker and slightly lighter the form factor though in terms of the footprint the physical footprint will be the same it's just a little bit thicker and a teeny teeny bit lighter um but it is the same buttons the same configuration mm -hmm. And in terms of the, the footprint and kind of the distancing there. Oh, As great. Thank you. Stream, second generation. So Mary, great, just to you. give you a bit of the weight. Um, so weight with the battery is actually 140 grams um, or five ounces. If you prefer it in mm -hmm. ounces. Okay, hopefully oh, that helped you. Yes, Did ounces. Did you memorize yeah. that, Andrew? Oh, I used the HumeWare Buddy app, you, you see. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used the Buddy app. That was quick and easy. <laughs> So the, yeah, the buddy app does have that info as well. That's awesome. I just I was amazed that you you knew the stats on the weight. Yes, <laughs> I shouldn't have told you that. Well, thanks, Mary. Okay, so thanks, let's Mary. go on to. Um, so we have one more. One more, then we'll then we'll okay. do that. Okay. 
So we have, uh, there's a lot of hands raised here, a lot of hands. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Wilcox. Hello, Jonathan. Jonathan Wilcox. So with the new software, humanware is moving away from TomTom. Tom. Yes. So in the Correct. future, how would the new map service provider work? So we're, we're, we're working that out. We're working that out, Jonathan. So the way it will work is the maps will, you know, the here maps will come in regions. You can certainly have the whole country on your device. They will be done in regions and you will manage them in theory through the PC, or you can still probably do them through Wi-Fi. I mean, you're not gonna be exclusively walled in. We're, we're still working that out. So as of right now, we don't have a definite answer for you. I can tell you that in the testing I've done, the maps have been much, much faster in terms of downloading them. It's a matter of minutes versus hours and hours and hours when you're using a PC. That is something we need to work out. So I'm not going to say at all that there is any definite answer. Um, tech support, nobody will have a definite answer until this is actually done. This is more of a preview as to what is to come. Um, I will certainly be doing the same sort of preview for the summer conventions and maybe I will have inform more information by that time. So, you know, it, it's just a matter of we're, we're, we're unsure, but uh, the maps will be redone. They will need to be reinstalled, redownloaded on, on existing units and things. I don't know if there will be a very slight cost to that. We don't know at this point, so please, be patient with us. We're working that out behind the scenes in terms of how it will work. But we, we know we have to address the map downloading issue where it just takes forever. And we want to address that and provide a faster, more seamless way for people to manage their maps and get maps on their devices. But thanks cool. a lot for the question. All right. Okay, right. So shall we... Name the winner of a new Victor Reader stream, shall we? I think we? we should. I think we should. Uh, we'll have a winner. And the way this will work, Andrew will, will look to see if the person is present. Remember, you have to be present to win. So if you are present, you can win. Um, if you want to unmute yourself, you can. You do not have to. We're not putting anyone on the spot. Um, we will contact you via the email that you used to register for this webinar if you don't want to kind of come on today um, and say hi or something. <laughs> you do not feel obligated. It's all good if you don't. Andrew, we okay. don't have a drum roll. But no, I need to you. get one. I need to get one. Okay, <laughs> exactly. so the winner for this week's Victor Reader stream, second generation is, and they are present, bum, 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 bum. is Jill Ross it's a uh, Rossiter, Rossiter, raise your hands, Jill Rossiter. If you'd like to have a chat, I know you're present. I will have a quick chat with you. Um, so congratulations, Jill, if you want to have Jill. a chat. Oh, yeah, she's raised her hand. So hello, Jill, just unmute mute yourself. Jill, welcome. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> hey, it's all good. <laughs> you, you have won. Thank you for being here. Yes, and it's a Rossiter. And ah, have... Rossiter. Sorry, I do apologize. I yeah. like the way Andrew says it. He just. We're, I want to give Andrew. We're gonna have a name game. Where we're gonna send names to Andrew, and he just has to say all of them. I'd like everyone well, to to name my it surname. Should be, it should be familiar with it because he's from St Helens in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Over well, between Liverpool and Manchester. So tell us where you're from originally. I I'm from Northamptonshire in the UK. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we were we were trying to figure out your uh, accent earlier, he and I. <laughs> oh, a lot of people a lot of people say I'm Aust I sound Australian, but uh, I guess that's what a lot of Americans sort of would say well, with any When Brits, I was yeah. listening to myself, I sound like I'm so Chicago at times. I'm like, remember the back, this and the end. It's like, oh my gosh. Cool. <laughs> so so but listen, Jill. Yeah, Jill. congratulations, Jill. We'll be in touch with you with the email that you use to register. Um, so stay tuned. We'll email you with some further details on how we'll get that stream oh, to you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. You I enjoyed so the presentation welcome. as well. Oh, fantastic. Enjoy. We hope, we hope it's useful. These are times to definitely to get a lot of reading done and things. So we're, we're, we're exactly. glad you could win. Thanks, Jill. Thank Thanks, Jill. All right. Live winner. We, we are uh, moving on up and we're just a reminder. We will be doing one human we live blindness sort of Andrew and I braille episode next week it will be on Thursday and you will have to register for it because we are going to do another drawing 
Um, not sure about the prize quite yet. I think our, our, we'll figure that out. But yeah, I think it's another stream. Episode. It's another stream. stream. Yeah, it's another stream. It is uh, the stream month of May. Um, yes. we are, that is awesome. So you, you will register. If you're looking for us on Tuesday, unfortunately, we will not be here. Um, I am looking at, we're going to, so Andrew and I will continue to do Humanware Live episodes every Thursday. On the Tuesdays, I'm looking at flavoring this differently at some point, but bear with us. You will learn more. I will talk about it in future episodes or we will send it out in the newsletter. I'm just trying to figure some things out. Um, but we will be back next Thursday with Humanware Live, and you will have to register. And again, in order to draw for a winner, we do need you to register, and that is why um, we also uh, will need you to register 24 hours in advance to qualify for the drawing. You can still attend, you just can't win, um, which not everyone needs to win, right? I guess attending, attending is just as important. But uh, <laughs> we'll take a few more questions. Um, I know there were sure. lots of hands yeah, raised. A lot. Okay. I really want to make sure we can get to everyone. We're so glad everyone's here. Okay. So, uh, is there plans to make a headset or separate speaker like the Trekker Breeze had? I have complaints from my students about not hearing directions over road noise. So, I, I, I think uh, it's a great question. There was a separate speaker for the Breeze. Uh, I don't think you will see us source any sort of speaker. I think there are so many Bluetooth speakers out there today um, where aftershocks are a great way to use the track because they don't cover your ears. Um, that I, I think, you know, we, we can, we, I think at one point in time we had aftershocks on our website. I know that you know, us putting something in the box, us sourcing our own is just something we're not going to do. There are so many options, little wearable, there are, there are small wearable Bluetooth speakers out there if that's something you need. Um, you also, it might be helpful to, you know, put the, it, just depending on where you are, I mean, maybe having the Trek, you know, Velcro to a strap or something where it's up higher uh, necessarily than sitting on your belt clip because it does come with the clip to kind of put it on your waist. Um, but it might be more helpful if, if maybe you find a way to place it higher or, or do something like that if you want to use that, that built-in speaker. Otherwise, you're really going to want to take the Aftershocks sort of route or, or small Bluetooth speaker route. The Aftershocks are, are what I would recommend because they leave your ears open and you're, you're, you're able to, to kind of utilize them that way. Okay. Um, is if you miss an instruction or direction, can you have it repeated? Yes, you can. So if you push the play button, it will repeat uh, what was previously spoken. So the play button will repeat uh, an instruction. So if you miss something pressing play, it will say the last kind of read instruction back to you or the last spoken uh, instruction back to you. Okay. Next question. Is the GPS affected by cloudy weather? Uh, the GPS certainly can be affected by cloudy weather. Yes. Yeah. So if you're if you're walking around much, and that's not exclusive to a trek, um, you will have at any point in the day. I mean, depending on where you are in the world, right? You might have anywhere from three to twelve to six to who knows how many satellites you're getting. Um, it can be affected by cloudy weather. Generally, it's not a big deal. Um, I have done plenty, plenty, plenty of trek workshops over the years in many parts of the country. Um, and every now and then I get a unit that gets a little haywire when there's thunderstorms in the area, but it's not like you're, you know, um, kind of being thrown all over the place. Sometimes it just affects how, my, how, how well the satellites can reach the ground. Okay. And next question is, what is the difference between the Victor Trek and your smartphone? <laughs> oh, well, that's a loaded question. Uh, there are many differences. The, the biggest being when you're using a track, you are not using data on your smartphone. So you don't need a data plan. Um, you know, there are tremendous differences. Um, if you're comfortable with a touch screen or not, would be a major difference. Um, draining your battery on your smartphone when you're using GPS apps is a major concern. Uh, the ability to do what I showed today with virtual exploration, you cannot do that on your, on your smartphone in terms of the iPhone and things. Um, you know, there, there are tremendous differences. That doesn't mean that one is better than the other. I would never, ever say that one is better. Uh, but there are some 
benefits to using a standalone GPS product built for somebody who was blind or visually impaired versus using an off the shelf iPhone app. That doesn't mean that those apps aren't good and that they don't work. Uh, just there are some, some major pieces. Are you a good one handed iPhone user also comes into play. Um, if you're a good one handed iPhone user and you can use your gestures and you don't mind holding your phone up in the air while you walk around, that's fantastic. Uh, but I think that's the other piece of it too. I live in Chicago. I am not comfortable holding my phone up in the air and walking around. When I did that root creation demo, I was actually like, I had, I had a friend uh, watching me because I was like, dude, I'm walking around here with my iPhone just held up in the air trying to record my voice, and, which is concerning. So yeah. again, you know, we, we, in terms of the, the differences, they are major. Uh, one is a standalone device built by a company who builds products for people who are blind and visually impaired. The iPhone, you're getting apps that, yes, they are made. Some are made for people who are blind and visually impaired, but there are some differences in terms of what they have access to in the, in the iPhone. All right, we'll do one or two more. Okay, can you drop POIs in the offline mode? No, you cannot drop uh, POIs because, again, you're, all, you're moving by intersection to intersection to intersection. The landmarks are meant to be done kind of in open areas or in space, right? In between intersections, a parking lot, a, you know, you're not dropping those when you're virtually walking around. And I because love you this. Actually, in theory, you don't even know what's there until you walk it. So we don't want you dropping landmarks at some random point just because you're randomly standing there. Um, you, you will not know. So I love this question that's come in is, does the trek work during flight? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it does not. Uh, I've tried. Uh, I fly, well, not right now, but I generally fly quite a, quite a few times a month. And it, I've tried. I've, I've thought it would. I think there's just way too much interference uh, from the planes. And, you know, airplane mode is very important um, to have on. So, you know, we, we, it, it will not work. And also the maps, I think you're just moving too fast for maps to really know where you are. If you want some of that, if you're on a plane and you're sometimes if you're using an iPhone app with Wi-Fi, so something like Blind Square, you can get GPS coordinates um, and kind of get your current location. That is done through Wi-Fi through the data of the plane. It's not doing it through the satellite. So keep, keep that in mind. I, I, there are some podcasts I've heard where, where some have done it. So, um, and, I, and I can confirm it works, but not on the track. There's just too much, too much interference going on. Wow, you must have been bored during that flight to find that out, Peter. <laughs> Andrew, do you remember the time you and I were on a flight and we played uh, a video game, the uh, the text adventure game? <laughs> I do, I do. We're an hour and 10 minutes. <laughs> Me I either. do. You but talk about passing time. <laughs> That's true. What, what about, I mean, we talk about the flight, but what about if you was on a train? I mean, that's, that's an interesting point. I guess if you had yes. various tr uh, trains that you need to go. work on a train. So I use it on the train because I take the, you know, the metro sort of transit here, the, the light rail in, in the city and in the suburbs when I, when I have appointments here in Chicago, and I absolutely use it. Sometimes the announcements on the train don't work. You may live in a place where there are no announcements or your car is, is the speakers aren't working. You can absolutely use it to know where you are while you are on a train. It will treat you really as though you're in a vehicle because you're moving pretty fast, but you can get your, you know, your, your, your points of interest. You can get lots of that stuff. So it will work in a car, in a bus, in a train. Awesome. And so uh, what about Bluetooth earbuds? Um, with the Trek, obviously working with Bluetooth, can it work with earbuds and any other headsets for that matter? So it can. This is always a, an interesting point, right? When it comes to Bluetooth, you will have various manufacturers and different protocols, things that, that will work better than others. I have met many people out there who use certain types of hearing aids that do not work with the Trek um, due to probably some type of Bluetooth protocol. I, I don't know what the answer would be there, but in general, Bluetooth headsets, Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth earbuds will work. I have three or four pairs of Bluetooth headphones. They all work with the Trek. Um, wirelessly. I have Bluetooth speakers. I have a couple here um, that do work, but I have come across especially hearing aids that don't work as seamlessly with the track for, for some given reason. And so sometimes that has to do with the type of platform that they're using and they will work very well with the iPhone, but not necessarily with, with the Victor Reader track. But in general, your, your AirPods, your Bluetooth headphones and earbuds and speakers will work. Awesome. Okay. And so our next question here one is nine, more. one more question. Okay. 
Oh, I'll try and get another one out of you, Peter. Uh, I, have to, a... <laughs> I have a couple. I have a couple conferences I have to do this afternoon, okay. so I need to. So... I need to get some food and then go go on with my day. Sure. So I'm a TVI and haven't used the Trek. It looks very similar to the Victor Reader. Does it also perform the functions of a reader, store books and such, as well it, as navigate? That's a great question. Perfect question. It absolutely does. Um, it will do all of the functions of the Victor Reader Stream second generation. So it will work. You can record notes. You can, um, you know, stream radio or, or download podcasts or books from Bookshare or, you know, your, your Daisy on your online libraries, um, NFB Newsline here in the United States, your, your Wiktionary or Wikipedia. It does all of that in addition to having the orientation mode. So that, that really, it, it brings all of the, the, you know, the Victor Reader stream functionality with the enhancement of Bluetooth into a navigation device. That is an awesome question. Good question. Uh, we'll do okay. one more. Let's keep, let's keep going. Whoa, you're on a roll. Okay, so uh, this will be an easy one. Um, okay, why not? <laughs> okay, this is, uh, besides the new maps feature, are you planning to introduce new features? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, well, I, I don't guess... know the answer to that. These are two <laughs> new features which aren't out yet. So, so yeah, I mean, the the, I think the answer map browsing yeah. mode, um, we're always we're always looking to to you know enhance our products so going forward it's something that we're always looking to uh to, to update the our devices uh okay right. um so last one let's make this the last one um okay this is a bit of a long question so if i am creating a route and i reverse the room essentially a blind person does not know where is north west east or south all we are doing is following the voice. What will happen if I walk in the wrong direction? Will the victory to alert me to that? It will. So it will say off route. And remember, when you push the number five key, it's going to tell you your direction of travel. Um, if you need, you know, a blind person can certainly learn north, south, east, west. Um, and you will learn, right, if it's telling you that you're heading south, right, and, and your instructions are saying you're off route, you need, you know, you want to be heading north on, on Racine, um, you're going to need to learn, what does that mean? How do I correct from east to north, right? If I'm heading east, well, that would mean I need to, you know, turn, turn left to head north and so on. But you will, you can use your five key to figure out your direction of travel. And your six key tells you your next instruction. So if you're getting further away, it's going to tell you you're off route and it's going to tell you where you need to be going. Um, a blind person absolutely can, can, can figure that out. That's, that's the whole point of the product. Um, it, it will tell you the direction you're heading and you can certainly, the whole point of reversing those routes is just to retrace your steps. And sometimes when you, you know, it takes a few moments or a few steps until it detects that you're going the wrong way. So, you know, the satellite has to detect which way you're going. So yes. you know, maybe that it's looking at you, you're heading towards the wrong intersection and then you'll get that prompt. Okay, well. Right, and, uh, and I think it's very common. A lot of times we, we want people to kind of, you know, with, they stand with a GPS and say, it says I'm heading west. Well, or if you're not moving, it doesn't know where you are. Your iPhone, nothing knows where you are until you really start moving or start kind of pick, pick a direction. I would say pick, pick it and stick with it and, and get it, get yourself moving, get that feedback, and then you can always correct if you need to. Well, that's great stuff, Peter. Um, I think that becomes the end of the webinar. I think it gives you time to have something to eat. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, and I'm actually quite hungry myself. Rock and roll, you are so, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're supper time. So uh, All right. let's, well, let's not forget you, next week. We will be back next Thursday. Yeah, next week, next Thursday. If you have suggestions for topics, please send them to humanware live at humanware.com. And Andrew and I will, will be around next Thursday. We don't know what we're talking about. We're going to figure that out very shortly. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> we will we'll, we'll be here for, from, from the Thursdays on forward, same time. And you will have to register in order to win. Correct. So yeah, just remember, just remember next week is the Thursday. We're not here on Tuesday. Okay. Brilliant. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Andy. Keep safe. Take care. Bye, everybody.